So welcome to Techno Dad Life where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're gonna be going over some of our questions and comments that we get. We tend to get a lot of questions. And if you like this video, make sure you like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And here we go now. Okay, so I get a lot of questions on this channel and I, sir, I want to go over some of the questions or comments that I just got. I suggest people go to the forums. And again, the forums are volunteer too, so your question might not be answered right away. But two things I would suggest for the forums is you're as nice as possible because everybody on there is very nice. And the other thing is put as much information as possible. So instead of just saying this doesn't work you sort of copy your config files or anything else that you've done haven't or is not working and you make sure you post that with your thing so there's as much information there as possible to start out with and you're more likely to get an answer faster that way and so this question is from veda torkun uh, I watched and applied the steps, but each time the Docker installation failed, device Raspberry Pi 3 plus current version OMV4 Raspberry Pi Pi dot image, I couldn't find a solution in the forums. OMV updated and OK. Open Media Vault. OMV Extra Latest all four I've installed and OK Docker repo active. And okay, but Open Media Vault Docker GUI installation is giving an error picture. And so this is actually a common error with OM, or with Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi. And so the Raspberry Pi image is not a uh, official sort of OMV image. It's somebody that makes up on their own, and it has some peculiarity. Computer. Computer peculiarities and so one of them is sometimes you have to reinstall it a couple times before it works properly and that's because it's a bunch of different scripts and so generally with the Raspberry Pi there are two things that really affect how well your installation goes so one is do you have a new card a SD card is it clean SD card and so has it been formatted properly uh, is it a fast SD card Okay, so SD card, number one reason for problems. Number two is power supply. So anything a Raspberry Pi 3 or above needs a higher power, raspberry, or higher power power supply than the Raspberry Pis before that. So just make sure those two things are fixed or proper first because those cause the most errors for most people. And then next, if it didn't install correctly, you might have to uh, reinstall it a couple times. Uh, and if you look in the forums, there is actually several threads that basically say that same thing. So just take care of the first two, SD card, power supply, make sure those are okay. And then if that doesn't work, try reinstalling once or twice. This one's from Hendrik Landry. Great, thanks for the tutorial. I have a question. Can I use VPN transmission and the plugin open VPN server for the access at home? And so basically he's asking about uh, two different things there. So he wants transmission access to the web to get torrents through a VPN. And yes, you can do that. And then open VPN would be a VPN that you access your server from outside of the network and then into your server and so yes you can do both those things but those are actually two different things so there are two different programs for that and then joyfield said hey i only have one one terabyte drive and one partition i can't put one hard disk into raid at that point the entire tutorial is useless what do i do so the entire tutorial is not useless, you just skip the RAID part. So in order to enable RAID, you actually have to uh, have more than two disks to use. So RAID is a, a backup or more of like a copying of extra data there. And so you need two hard drives for that. The, in the uh, tutorial, I actually say it's optional. 
And if you don't have two hard drives, you just actually skip the RAID part and everything else works as it should. And actually in the video, I don't think I have RAID. Uh, maybe I do, I don't. Or I think I only have one hard drive in the video. So Yamil Lanos says, Hey Technodad Life, could you please make a video on how to create Steam Cache using OpenMedia Vault? Definitely. Uh, so I have a list of over 50 things that people have asked me to do. I'll add that to the list, but I'll give you a little hint on how to get it done faster. Uh, so generally, if you butter me up and then other people also are asking for it, it will tend to get done faster, especially if it's interesting to me. So I like doing videos that are interesting to me. Uh, I don't really have uh, use Steam, so I can probably do it, but uh, you know, if other people aren't really interested, because that's the first time I've heard of it, uh, then probably it will be further down on the list. And so Greek Geek Review says, great video, LOL, you have i7-7700 for Open Media Vault, uh, or is it a VM? And so a lot of the, I actually have a bunch of different servers, but for a lot of the videos I actually use VMs because in order to get them work, I will install, delete, install, delete, which generally is not a good thing to do on your server. It's better to just do it once and let it run. And so I do a lot of the test workers on VMs, and especially if it's something that I don't plan on using myself, I'll just do it on a VM, then I can get rid of it and then start fresh for the next one. And this one's from Lou Me. Hello. Hello, Lumi. Your videos are very helpful. Thank you. Uh, could you please make a video about the integration of ZoneMinder in OMB4X? And yes, I'll put it on the list. See, you know, he did the right idea. First he said, you make great videos. So definitely that moves up the list. And one, one Luis Blanca says, hello, could you please make a video on how to configure OpenVPN and OpenMedia Vault and how to use it to access the computers on the internal network from the internet? Thanks. And yes, Juan, I am working on this right now. Actually, I am leaving on vacation though for a week and so it might be delayed a little bit. But I was actually thinking about this morning and I might actually change this from doing open VPN to actually using Let's Encrypt to access like Himdale, which will ex let you access everything on your server. So it's probably a better way of actually doing it. Open VPN uh, sort of limits what you can do. You can't really access your programs on your computer, which is actually what most people want to do. And then uh, CE Young says, thanks to your tutorials, I've expanded it for Nextcloud backups and just fun playing with a server. Glad to help and good job CE Young. It's not that hard as long as you keep trying. And so that's what our channel is about, build, learn, and create. And so we build it, we learn, and then finally it's created. So it's, it's fun, you know, that's why we do this for the fun. And Anzarxy he says, great video, man. Keep on up the good work, just keeping, just getting into OMV on RPI, Raspberry Pi, and you are my go-to when I need help. If you get a chance, would you make a video on setting up OpenVPN AS Docker so we can remote access for the server? Thanks, and yep, we'll, uh, we're just talked about that. Mick Burkett LLC says in, it really would be helpful to know where you're just typing stuff. You say in the upper right, but there's nothing in the upright of any screen I have. And so Nick, I've replied a couple times, but again, it's sort of in the upper right corner. And so basically it says search and then it says all, and then there's a box there. I'm sorry you can't see it. Maybe your monitor's a little older, I don't know. But there is a box there and you just click on that area and then start typing things and things will show up. And then Major Pain, Major Pain says, do not walk from this program, run from it. I set up, I set my settings just as your instructions for Plex. I set your instructions just like Watchtower 
it updated, it blew out my settings and watched list and everything. It changed where it got the config, where to look for the files. And so this is good. So basically probably one of two things happened. So one is major pain probably didn't set his config file in the right app data, in the app data folder or a very common thing is he forgot to hit the plus sign when he did it so those settings were saved uh, and the other thing is sometimes there's changes in the containers I don't actually use Plex myself and so if there's major changes in the container then that will actually also uh, make it so the server doesn't work uh, because the settings are different and so a good example of that is the let's encrypt container by Linux server where last December they completely changed the container and it just broke everything so it stopped functioning completely and everybody had to reinstall everything and so the program he's talking about here is watchtower and so watchtower updates your containers automatically and so if you're worried about things breaking or you uh, have some very important programs running, then I would not run Watchtower because Watchtower does things automatically. Uh, you can update your uh, containers manually then. And simply that would be you just delete the container, save your app data folder, and then just reinstall the container and it should just reuse your folder that way. Okay, and the last one is from Kino Games. Excellent video. Thank you so much. And thank you, Kino Games. And it's always a pleasure helping everybody. And remember, if you have questions, make sure you go to the forums. That will be your fastest way to find out things. And until next time, bye-bye. And you might see me with a tan next time you see me. Take care.